Today I'm going to show you how to use the project management uh, module of uh, POMQM. I'm going to use problem uh, 12 and 13 in your book. So let's go to uh, POMQM and bring it up. Go to File, New, Problem 13, uh, 12 and 13 gives us single time estimates. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change the problem number to be problem 12 and 13. Number of tasks given in this problem are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's seven. One, two, three, four, five, seven. And I want to keep the default to be precedence list. A, B, C, D is the task names that is the default. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. When I get this window, I'm going to put um, the activity names given that I selected are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm going to uh, enter the activity times from problem um, 13. Those are two, oops, five, one, ten, three, six, eight. The precedence uh, uh, list is given in problem. 12. A doesn't have a predecessor. B and C don't either, so I'm going to leave those blank. D has B as a predecessor. E has A and D. A and D. Then we have C for the next activity. And then we have E and F. So that's E and F. At this point, uh, since I had selected single time estimate, the method is um, chosen as that, but you can click and change it to um, other applications. At this point, you want to click Solve. You get two windows. One is the project management result. That's this first one that pops up. Uh, the duration of the activity will be 26 um, weeks, I think. These are in weeks, maybe. And if you add up all of the activity times individually, they add up to 35. But if you're able to manage the um, project, you'll be able to finish it in 26 weeks. All the early times, early finish times, late start times, and late finish times are also given to you. Slack is reported. Uh, with this um, uh, software, um, the latest finish time is set equal to the latest start time, and therefore all the critical activities end up with zeros as their slack. So those activities that have zero <coughs> are the critical activities. <coughs> that means those are the activities that if delayed by any amount, the entire project time will be delayed and will be longer than 26 weeks uh, by that much. Charts are also reported. <clears throat> Across the top, you can see the Gantt charts. This is the early times. This is the late times. Early and late times imposed on each other, superimposed on each other. And here's the precedence graph. You can see that the critical path is indicated in red. So we have the critical activities B, D, E, and G for this problem. <clears throat> you can always go back to and edit uh, the data. <clears throat> And this concludes the session. For the, with the next one, I will show you how to use the, <coughs> to, actually, we can use the same thing for triple time estimates. If you change your mind and now you want to make this a triple time estimate, come here and change this to a PERT problem. You can see that the precedence list and the activities <coughs> are all mm, maintained or retained. But over here, we can give optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely times. So let's just go ahead and as most likely, let's go ahead and use the <coughs> times that were given to us to begin with, which were 2, 5, 1, 10, 3, 6, and 8, 3, oops, 6, and 8. But let's go ahead and um, assume that optimistic time here is 2 also, and um, uh, 5. For the next one, let's consider this to be 1, 5, and 7. For the next one, let's consider it is um, 1, 1, and 4. 
And I'm just picking these at random just to give you an idea how to work this network. <coughs> 8, 10, and 12. Um, <coughs> 2, 3, and 4. <coughs> um, 4, 6, and 9. <coughs> and let's make the last one um, 3, 8, and 15, for, for example. So the optimistic time is the most um, uh, um, uh, ideal, um, idealistic time or the um, uh, least uh, estimate of time. Most likely is what you think is um, likely to happen or is more, most probable. And pessimistic time is the worst case scenario. So optimistic is the best case scenario and pessimistic is the worst case scenario. Now with this, <coughs> you can still go ahead and solve and um, activity um, the project duration would still be 26, but um, these uh, times that are listed below it are the average times that are calculated for each activity. Uh, and of course, the early start, early finish, late start, and late finish times would be um, different because of these average times that are uh, in there and because of the formula that is applied. So both of those formulas for calculating the mean and the standard deviation of uh, a PERT problem of probabilistic times are in your um, book. Uh, I will show you in another videotape how to compute those via hand calculations. Um, slack for this um, activity is 12.17 weeks, but um, activities B, D, E, and G are now critical, and the standard deviation for each of those are listed. <coughs> Task co um, computations are given. Um, these are the times that I entered. Uh, these are the average times. This is the standard deviation, and this is the variance. Keep in mind that you need to first calculate the variance for each activity and then take square root of it to get its standard deviation. Another um, thing that you need to keep in mind is that you need to add up the variance for each of the critical activities so the 1 plus 0.44 plus 0.11 plus 4 gives you 5.56 variance for the critical path, and then you take square root of it to get the 2.36, which is the uh, standard deviation for the entire project, or for the critical path, which would be the standard deviation for the project. And um, under the windows, you can also see the chart for this. Again, all the different tabs are there for Gantt charts, and this is the precedence relationship. And that concludes our session for um, uh, PERT and CPM uh, modules.